Hey, it's Pat from PJM Scheduling Services. So today I wanted to show you how to cost load a schedule in P6. Um, there's, a, there's quite a few ways to do it. Uh, you can use expenses, resources. Um, so I, I've seen some people use user-defined fields to be creative. Uh, I've, I've generally used resources when cost loading. So you might find other, other ways of doing it, but um, just know there's there's actually actually a few different ways. There's not like one proper way to do it, but um, I've I've found that resources has worked for me. Maybe you'll find something else that works for you. But I'll show you how to do it with resources today. So um, I have my very simple baseline schedule here. Uh, the first step that I want to do is create a new cost resource. Um, and so to do that, you can go over to resources. And this is my resource library. It shows current projects resources. So there's no resources that are currently assigned to this project. So what I'll do is I'm going to filter for all my resources. And I don't have any resources created. So let's go ahead and create a new resource. And it's going to take me through this wizard here. Uh, I'll just call it uh, cost. And I'll call this cost resource. Okay. Um, and I'll use the walkthrough here. I'll just you I'll, I'll um, this is going to be a general like this is I'm not going to create multiple resources for trades and, and subcontractors and stuff like that. Um, I'm just going to have one resource and it's just going to be a cost. Uh, generally, that's that's what people um, tend to use is they just want to they just want a cost to an activity. They want to keep it really simple, but you can get really detailed. But uh, we're just going to do material, unit of measure. Um, I don't think I've defined, I have not defined any unit of measure, so we won't worry about that. Price per unit, uh, we can keep it at zero. We, we can keep all this the same. Uh, you can add your office phone number. I'm just going to go ahead and press finish. So now we've added our cost resource. So a couple things. Um, you can do calculate costs from unit. Uh, if you want to, there's so, you know, there's so many settings and I don't want to get too deep into a rabbit hole for the sake of this video, but just know, man, there's so many, as you get into the resources and cost loading schedules, there's just so many options. Let's just keep it simple, not check any of those. And we're going to, th that means that we're going to be, um, with, during the updating process, we're going to be doing everything manually. So instead of like, Automatically, the you know if an activity is fifty percent complete, uh, the cost will then be fifty percent billed. We'll input that stuff manually, but if you wanted to automate that stuff, you can change the settings around to do that. So, um, we've now created our resource. Cool. Let's go back to our schedule. The second step is to assign that resource to the activities that we want to assign costs to. So in order to do that, let's let's just say I'm going to do my prepare and submit activities. Maybe there's some costs associated with that. And then maybe our construction down here and our commissioning and our final punch list. Let's just say those are the activities that we're going to have costs associated with it. I'll highlight those. I'll assign that resource that I just created, this cost. So now... If I look, if I click on one of these activities, now I see, oh, great. I got the cost resource assigned. And let's create a column here um, for looking if the, looking at the, the, the cost. So I, I like to use budgeted total cost. And so right now there's no costs that are um, assigned to those activities. But what I'd like to do is there's there's a few ways to add costs once the resource is assigned. You can go down here to the, the details tab and let's add one for budgeted cost. All right. So this I can now I can actually input the specific dollar amount. So say this earthwork submittal is ten thousand dollars. I can just input it there to the budgeted cost column underneath that activity. And there we go. We got $10,000 for that submittal. So you can do that individually with these activities. There's another way of doing it, which if you go to resource assignments, 
and we have this this uh, table here. And so here are, this isn't all the activities in my project. This is just all of the activities assigned this cost resource, uh, this cost resource. So I can add a, a, a column here and call that budgeted costs. And instead, I can, I can go ahead and actually input my costs directly onto this sheet, which might be a little bit faster than like clicking individually on, uh, on these activities down here and adding my costs under the details tab. So um, you might try it this way. This, this is gonna be faster for our sake. So we might go here, 25,000, these three activities, you know, maybe these three activities here, I can fill down because all of those are 25,000. Here it's 50,000. So you get, you, I mean, you get the point. Let's, uh, let's just do a couple more. 2500 500 and 500 okay so now i've assigned my costs uh to to these activities and maybe you want to create a histogram and you want to say well what's my distribution over the life of the project um, and this is a pretty short project let's i'm going to go crazy here and let's change Let's do 25, 50, 30, 45, 50. I, I want to spread the cost over a longer period of time so you kind of get a better idea of what the distribution would look like. So let's reschedule that. All right. So now we have a longer project, and I want to know the, distri the distribution of, of um, cash flow for the re remainder of the project. You can go up here to activity usage profile. And it creates this graph on the bottom here. And, but right now it's only, only showing us labor units. So you right click activity usage profile options. And instead we're gonna switch from units to cost. And instead of labor, I want total, I want everything. Um, and let's just do, we can do budgeted and then we can do a cumulative cumulative line as well. And let's do it like a, a darker, more bold color here and apply that. So this looks cool. Now what I see is I can see in September, if I double click that line item here, oops, let's try, oops, my goodness. So let's try this again. If I double click on September, it shows me the month of September, I'm going to bill $11,000 or plan. My plan spend is 11,000. And to date through September, you know, because it's going to, this is going to be uh, cumulative, there will be $34,500 planned billing at that time. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and look at March. March, that's my highest spend, $23,000. And uh, cumulative is $132,500 uh, for, for um, cumulative spend through, through March. So that's kind of neat. Let me show you one other way that you can, um, so this, these numbers are getting derived obviously from the activities. And I wanna, I wanna see specifically um, like how in October, what activities are occurring in October that add up to uh, this amount of 12,833. And the way that we, we do that is if I hover over this here, resource usage spreadsheet, um, and again, this is currently in units and I need to change my spreadsheet. Uh, let's see, customize, I think it's here. Um, so instead of remaining units, I want, so we're gonna do time interval cost, budgeted cost, all right? Let's expand that a little bit. And so now I can see here that my ID, it's, this is everything under the cost resource, and there's October, there's our 12,833. So I see that $7,000 is coming from this um, activity A10, and then another $5,833 is coming from A1020. So a little, you, you kind of get the, the picture of once you cost load the schedule, you know, some of the analysis that you can do based on that. So hope that helps.